Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. Today, an overclocker gets over 2.1 GHz on AMD's new 5500 XT, and Intel and AMD competitors catching up, Intel makes a disappointing statement, and Windows 7 users are in trouble. But first, a quick thank you to Micro Center for sponsoring my first ever trip to CES. If you're looking for some great deals on PC hardware, definitely make sure to check them out. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, if you haven't seen the new RX 5500 XT, check out my review of it here. Shameless plugs aside, if you saw the review, you'll know that AMD's new GPU can overclock way above its rated gaming clock. Well, apparently it can get even higher than I thought. In a recent post by Igor's Lab, it seems a community member was able to help complete their new modding tool and it comes with support for the 5500 XT. This lets users override the limits the AMD has on clocks, power draw, etc. so you're able to get higher overclocks. Of course, I'll say this now, if you plan on doing this, make sure you know what you're doing. Otherwise, you risk damaging the GPU and it likely won't be covered by the manufacturer. And I take zero responsibility if something gets messed up. Anyway, while I haven't gotten a chance to test it myself, Igor was reportedly able to get their 5500 XT to a whopping 2.1 GHz on air, and they were even able to test it at 2.2 GHz. Now, I'm not sure if it actually got to those clocks, or it was simply set there as the maximum possible clock. Either way, I'm impressed. Next up, it looks like both Intel and AMD are about to get even more competition. And unlike my recent video that documented a startup that's looking to create CPUs in the future, this company has been doing it for years. And they also offer mainstream CPUs, so not just servers. They're called Zauxin. I know I pronounced that wrong, so I do apologize. Either way, they're a China-based chip maker that only just this year released 60 nanometer CPUs based on, well, this architecture. But what's interesting isn't what they're doing right now. In a recent report by Wikichip Fuse, the company just announced plans to expand their offerings. According to them, the company's next-gen parts will be based on 7 nanometers, and they're already at work on sub-7 nanometer nodes. Also, according to Fuse Wiki, the company plans on catching up to both AMD and Intel by 2021. Of course, whether their architecture can get the clocks and features beyond transistor size required to compete with AMD and Intel is tough to say. Also, whether the chip will ever come to the US is doubtful given recent concerns of backdoor government access, etc., but China is a strong market for both Intel and AMD, so it will be interesting to see how they plan to compete. As we've seen in the past, competition is a powerful drive to innovation. The future looks bright. Unfortunately, for now at least, Intel doesn't seem too phased, considering today's next story. At the recent USB conference, Intel answered a question regarding their next-gen CPUs. An analyst asked if the company planned to skip 10 nanometers and go straight to 7. You know, considering their 10 nanometers is literally years late and AMD has effectively surpassed them in nearly every way. Well, according to their response, Intel does not plan to do that. The engineering chief stated, quote, so we think we have a strong position in 14 nanometer, and of course, by the end of 2020, we'll come out with Ice Lake, our first 10 nanometer server solution that brings important performance per core benefits to the service. Basically, the answer is no. With that said, we can likely expect to see 10 nanometer desktop chips sometime next year as well, but whether it'll be enough to counteract AMD is tough to say. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Lastly for today, if you weren't aware, Microsoft is officially ending support for their popular Windows 7 on January 14th of next year. In fact, they want you to know so badly that they're sending out full screen pop-ups to make sure you do. Now, obviously this is pretty important, so I definitely do get this move. Apparently they plan on sending the notification out once this month and once next month. With that said, if you're a company and you absolutely need critical security patches, you can see about the extended security update, but you'll have to pay for it. Otherwise, to remain secure, you'll have to upgrade to Windows 10 or switch operating systems. Either way, Windows 7, you had a good run. So while that does it for today, what do you think? Should Intel skip 10 nanometers and go straight to 7? And what's your highest clock on the 5500 XT? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, have a great day.